Hey family, it's been a while and so much has happened in these last few weeks. So let's get right into it. In August, our community was devastated when three of our neighbors, Ms. Carr, Mr. Gallion, and Mr. Laguerre were violently murdered. What those families are experiencing is unimaginable. I wish that I could say that as a community, we are better than the actions of this one racist individual, except it's not just one individual. This is unfortunately baked into our culture and has reemerged on the main stage in recent years. This is Jacksonville. Racial terror lynchings are not new. And in fact, it's documented that Jacksonville has experienced racial terror lynchings since the early 1900s. And the folks who are committing these acts of terror aren't hidden in bunkers or castaways. They're often in plain sight. Our friendly neighbors, business owners, friends, and even families. The good news is that we don't have to stay this kind of Jacksonville. There is hope and redemption if we're willing to be honest with ourselves and take a hard look in the mirror. This is definitely in our DNA, but it doesn't have to be the deciding factor in how we exist as a community from here forward. I'm grateful for our local government, community organizations, and businesses that have banded together to continue fighting for change. These efforts combine to send a clear message that there are people in this community who recognize that we have to double down on our efforts to eradicate racism and hate in all forms. Together, we can make a change in our community and make it a place where all people can thrive. Additionally, we welcome the 108th Asala Conference to Jacksonville. From the kickoff dinner to the final ceremony, this conference provided an opportunity for like-minded people to join together and strategize ways and ideas to cause good trouble within our community. If you missed this year's conference in Jacksonville, there's always next year, and you'll have an opportunity to attend locally when the Asala Conference returns to Jacksonville in 2028. So mark your calendars now. In brighter news, I'm excited to share that on Thursday, September 28th, 90 Forward installed its second Little Free Diverse Library in Orange County. This library, the Julius July Perry Library, was placed in partnership with Zebra Youth, the Orlando Global Shakers, and Read in Color, a program spearheaded by the National Little Free Library Organization. Thank you to everyone who made this possible. Speaking of books, you're invited to join us on October 6th for a band book panel discussion at the Jesse Ball DuPont Center. This is an opportunity to hear from expert level panelists on the history and recent enforcement of book bannings in public schools. And on October 11th, 904 will be hosting our Read in Color kickoff event at the Church of Oakland. We encourage you to bring the kids and family out. For more details about both events, please visit 904word.org slash events. At 904word, we wholeheartedly embrace and celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month as an opportunity to honor and amplify the rich cultural contributions, diverse histories, and vibrant traditions of the Hispanic and Latinx communities. This month serves as a reminder of the invaluable impact that individuals of Hispanic descent have had and continue to have on our society. And we stand in solidarity to promote inclusivity, equity, and respect for this community as they display their resilience in the face of political attacks and adversity. We invite you to do the same. Well, that's all we have time for this month, family. I want to thank you for your continued support of 90 Forward, and we'll see you soon.